Appendix B, Learning the Skills of Facilitation, an educational course in architectural facilitation, the Koichan Lake Study. This is a case study that describes in outline and chronicles a course in the techniques of designing with people. The urgency for such education in schools of architecture is stated in this book. Writers around the world have echoed this urgency. Context An architectural design facilitation study with Merinda Conley as the acting architect was combined with a third year environmental studies course at the University of Victoria taught by Stanley King in a three-week period during the summer of 1984. The objective of the architectural study was the preparation of a design for an environmental studies center while involving approximately 25 university students and various university staff members as user clients. The design itself had to be completed to the sketch design stage and meet entirely with user client approval. The objectives of the environmental study were twofold. First, discussion with the practitioners in the art of decision making with emphasis on public participation. And second, practical work with the public in obtaining data for the alteration of an environment. The site. The site, an off-campus study area, was a cleared pasture surrounded by dense virgin forest at the northern edge of Koichan Lake on Vancouver Island and contained tent accommodations for students and staff a new kitchen and mess hall, and a century-old log house for the caretaker's family. Architectural Objectives of the Study The educational objectives of the architectural study aimed to develop skills in 1. Communication with user clients to define to define the activities and environments that they wished to experience in the area. 2. Perception of design possibilities in meeting the needs of the user clients. 3. Visualization of all stages of the design process, including alternative functional relationships, influences of the site on the building, and of the building on the site, transition, transition space from exterior to interior, effects of light on surfaces, illumination and acoustical treatment, and proportion and rhythm in design. Skills in producing a sketch design that satisfies the requirements and expectations of the user clients. Design sequence. The design process used throughout the study followed a particular sequence. The design workshop. Consideration of special, special features. Visualization of prioritized features. Second, site visit and re-evaluation of requirements. Ongoing guidance from user clients. Detailed site studies. Evaluation of three design alternatives. Final concept design. Presentation. Design workshop. 25 environmental students and three co-design people traveled by vans to Kowichan Lake for the weekend workshop. For the following two days, everyone worked, cooked and ate together and shared large tents for sleeping. On Saturday, a co-design workshop was held for the students, staff, and site residents in working groups of four to five groups. 
the evening ended with a communal supper animated with conversation about the day's events and the workshop images that lined the walls. Consideration of activities. On Sunday, the user clients considered special features emerging from the ideas generated the previous day. In order for the user clients to examine further how their ideas in interrelated, Merinda explained the theory of bubble diagrams and how each bubble representing an activity such as dining, indoor recreation, studying, and so on helped in understanding which activities should be located next to each other, as well as the importance of circulation among these activities. Dividing into four groups of five to seven people each, the user clients drew their own bubble diagrams. Referring to the timeline generated in the workshop on Saturday, they gathered the activities into specific categories. Each group generated three alternative bubble diagrams, which resulted, resulted in a total of 12 alternative activity relationships. During Sunday, Merinda also spent a number of hours sketching on site in order to visualize the site later. Site planning and description of environments around activities. After the group returned to the University of Victoria, discussions continued in order to locate particular activities and buildings on the site. The user clients each detailed the ideal environment that they envisioned for three activities of their choices of their choice, such as cooking, socializing or lecturing, in essays essays of up to five pages. The students found Christopher Alexander's book A Pattern Language extremely useful in helping them define their environment. They elaborated on the perceptual sense of sight, sound, smell, taste and touch and described the aura, circulation, number of people and time of day of each activity. Visualization of priority features. On Tuesday evening and Wednesday, Merinda analyzed and grouped the descriptive essays into essays into categories of activities requiring similar details of environment. During the next four days, she visualized the descriptions in the form of perceptual perspectives, plans, and sections. Diagramic studies of light and acoustics were done Saturday through Tuesday. Each study sheet combined three, separated, three separate descriptive essays for the same activity and visualized their combined essence. For, in, for example, the user clients specified that the arrival, parking, and entry area included include a lobby located in the main environmental center and large enough to handle 30 to 35 people with backpacks and baggage. The room was to be well lit by large windows on both sides of the door and for, from a skylight above and have window seats in the main lobby area. The entry itself was to be approached by three wooden steps leading onto a wooden porch that extended the entire length of the building, and the appearance of the building was to be of heavy rustic timber with wrought iron textures. Alternative concepts. On the following Tuesday, Merinda evaluated all the bubble diagrams the students drew and synthesized them to generate three alternative site layouts. She also drew a matrix diagram of activities to show the interrelationship of the information in the bubble diagrams and a time graph 
a time graph showing the time of each uh, say time of the time of day of each activity. That evening, she then returned to the site to conduct additional studies as well as to confirm site data obtained from the University of Victoria's mapping facility. Evaluation of alternative concepts. On Wednesday afternoon, the group made a second site visit for re-evaluation re of needs and expectations. The vans that transported everyone to Koichang Lake were used as easels for presenting the nine study sheets. The presentation showed the user clients exactly what they were asked for. They reviewed the drawings from the workshop and the study sheets from their descriptive essays and then began to re-evaluate what they really needed, what they really expected. On reviewing the drawings, they saw that their ideas were too grand, grand, grandiose and unrealistic and would destroy the qualities of the clearing. They walked the site again, imagining how the activities and buildings might be scaled down and hidden in the trees. Activities could be overlapped to incorporate them in a multi-purpose room rather than have a separate building for each activity. Discussions emphasized that the user clients came to these conclusions on their own, having been given the opportunity to communicate with each other and to visualize the consequences of their ideas. They clearly understood that it was necessary to keep the design at a more intimate scale within the forest, that the second site visit was so important and that the architect must always have ongoing guidance from the user clients. Summary of requirements. On the following day, Thursday, Merinda displayed all of her drawings in the university classroom. The user clients reviewed their past comments and continued to note further changes. The drawings remained exhibited on the wall to allow the students to continue their comments during the following morning. At that time, all of the comments were completed and the design requirements summarized. Extended site and code studies. During the next three days, Merinda studied site plans, contour plans, and wildlife and recreational recreational recreation usage maps from the University of Victoria's mapping department and then made site drawings of, of topography, vegetation, climatic considerations, circulation, zoning views, adjacent buildings and vehicular access. She reviewed the applicable standards and code requirements. Three design alternatives. On Monday, now two weeks into the design exercise, Merinda presented three concept design alternatives for the spatial organization of the environmental center. The alternative explored grouped arrangements linked buildings and buildings contained by a continuous wall. She conducted a discussion that reached a consensus for the continuous wall alternative. This alternative met many of the requirements they had been expressing, such as the need to move from space to space without having to go outside, having one central meeting space, that branches off to other areas, having all activities near at hand, and having spaces contained under one roof with a variation of internal form. With this consensus, Merinda was able to proceed with the final stages of the design. Design of parts. 
on Monday, a series of colored drawings of the parts of the building were also presented. These summarize the user client's requirements, the site data, and the code requirements. The drawings visualize the spaces for each group of activities. One part, for example, showed an entry large enough for 25 people and window seats at the entry's exterior walls. Another part showed a kitchen large enough for two groups of six people and another showed a large open space for eating, socializing and recreation together. The design theme emphasized the use of heavy timber in keeping with, in, with the intimacy of the forest. The drawing included the functional relationship as set out in bubble diagrams and matrix and the opinion of user clients on the important site elements such as the need to retain a view or the need for an extended porch overhang for protecting protection from rain. Discussion of the parts and theme continued to a consensus agreement. An intuitive design process. During the next three days, Tuesday to Thursday, Merinda closed the door to her studio to begin the process of visualizing the final design and to enter into the intuitive creative process. Fitting the technical and aesthetic parts into a conceptual whole. The solution, the solution lay in bringing the parts together and visualizing a walkthrough for the whole building. The design aimed to incorporate the essence of detailed activities and environmental qualities rather than attempt to reproduce replicas of the images. Construction alternatives, spatial requirements and transi transitions, entry of light on surfaces, golden mean proportions, and acoustical treatments numbered among the design issues considered during this final phase. Even the design of small windows, window seat detailed al alcoves and the junction of detailed elements were included in the project's final synthesis. Presentation of the final concept. On Friday morning at 10.30 a.m., after many long hours of preparation, Merinda presented the final design for the environmental center to the user clients. She displayed all of the drawings generated during the three-week study program, including the initial workshop drawings, the drawings of parts, site studies, site plan, interior and exterior perceptives, plans, sections, elevations, and a number of detailed drawings. She described the life of the center as an activity discussion facility accommodating students for weekend or week-long seminars. One could arrive by van under a large port shielding against inclement weather and extending welcome to all visitors. The main building encompassed group social interaction and multiple activities with the plan and interiors reminiscent of the axial Romanesque style of architecture. Gathering around the drawings, the user clients pointed to various elements of the design and expressed their satisfaction with how well their ideas had been molded together. They became elated, elated as they saw the vision of the new center and imagined themselves using the facility.
The design won 100% approval from the user clients. There were no negative responses. A community design participation exercise had led to a design faithfully incorporating the visions of the user clients. Evaluation. Merinda commented afterward on the experience of the study. She found the sequence of design, of design through the images of ideas and the decision of parts into the concept design generated the design quickly. It allowed the participants to en enter easily into the design process and collaborate in its re development. The use of images helped the user clients see for themselves that their initial ideas were too grandiose and would ruin the site. As a result, they reacted consensus they reached consensus easily on the final design requirements the excited response of the user clients when they saw the completed design and its faithful representation of their ideas was very rewarding for Merinda. the three-week period was insufficient for the amount of work that Merinda was required to complete. A more appropriate duration of study would be one university seminar of four months. Stanley King commented also on the shortness of the three-week period as inadequ inadequate to cover the whole community design process. He emphasized that Merinda's advanced drawing skills were a prerequisite for the course. Another architectural student began the program with Merinda but dropped out in face of the demanding tasks of visualization. <clears throat> architectural education re rarely offers such an opportunity for the student to acquire skills of design communication with, the with a large number of user clients. Following the completion of the course, Merinda's design was presented to the tutors and examiners of the Calgary chapter, Royal Architectural Institute of Canada. They greeted the design and drawings with enthusiastic approval for their quality and sensitivity. The drawings were selected for national publication to represent the chapter's syllabus program. Concept Drawings for Kowichan Lake Environmental Center A. Site Plan B. Floor Plan C. Section D. Evaluation E. Interior Perspective of, of Dining Hall F. Interior Perspective of Social Seminar Room Credit Merinda Conley and the RAIC Syllabus Review